What are your memories of the day that George Floyd died and some of the reaction that, that you got from student athletes in the coming days and weeks? Dismay and, and, and a lot of, uh, you know, what I would call controlled anger. In hindsight now, you see it as a turning point that people had just had enough. George Floyd's death has brought a lot of people here in Baton Rouge back to the summer of 2016 when Alton Sterling was killed. It's time. Like, we're not little kids anymore. We can actually make change by voting, by, by raising awareness, by doing things, by giving back to the community, showing the black community that they can go somewhere with this. For racial injustice to be eradicated, we all got to get in this fight. Let me start with a question. Can we have a conversation? The truth is, we've been trying to have this conversation. But maybe you couldn't hear us because we couldn't breathe. It's hard to be heard with a knee on your neck, seven bullets in your back, or when you're sleeping in your apartment. But we've been trying to talk for years. About a month ago, LSU administration reached out to me. We sat down on the sixth floor and they told me about a survey they conducted throughout the entire athletic department. 300 respondents, a 74% response rate, 65 questions, 15 sections, 80 pages of data. The more I read, the more I thought, the more I realized that it wasn't just a survey. It was a conversation, a conversation that we needed to have a long, long time ago. A conversation between people who are resistant to change and those who are desperate for it. George Floyd is murdered. Can you just share with me your personal reaction to that moment? I, I could never watch the entire video. Eight minutes and 46 seconds of an officer kneeling on a man's neck. I was pregnant at the time with a boy, and I have a stepson, and I have a husband, and I have a father, and uncles and friends, you know, that look like George Floyd. But as a black person, you do automatically think that your race is what causes such negative things to happen to you, because there are so many people who um, think you're less than or inferior because of the color of their skin. And we actually started to then get texts from students um, who were concerned and just worried um, about the responses that were happening. Students gave us their input on also being kind of tired of seeing it and kind of asking, well, what are you going to do? That question, what are you going to do? That's the question that started everything. In June, LSU responded by holding their very first meeting of the LSU Athletics Leadership Council on diversity and inclusion. That meeting launched a number of councils, associations, and initiatives. And while those steps were important, to take the next step, we needed to know more. We needed to know who we were and who we wanted to be. Let's we'll start at the beginning. When did the racial climate survey from the athletics department come across your radar? We started really working on it in July, August, developing the questionnaire and then we didn't administer the survey until September. When the idea of a, a survey was, was floated and, and agreed upon, what did you hope to learn once we went through the process of a survey? Well, I just wanted to make sure that, that our staff were represented and their, and their voices heard. And so to me, it was almost a no-brainer to do a survey. 300 people took the survey. 300 people answered difficult questions struggled with their experiences, and in complete confidence, opened their hearts and their souls, wrestling with conflicts and collisions generations in the making. So I think it gave us a chance to really just get some lived experiences of people. What does it really feel like to work at LSU? Um, and what things are important to them because maybe they've never been asked before. When I took the survey, I actually opened it the first time and started and then closed it. Because I was like, this isn't gonna make a difference. Why am I doing this? Okay, the goal of the climate survey is to see where are we at so we can then figure out where are we going. You can't figure out where you're at with a low response rate. 
it was really important to me to go through Institutional Review Board in order to add some legitimacy to the survey. If people feel like I'm filling this out and my answers are confidential, then they're going to be more likely to respond to the survey. A couple days passed and I said, you know what, if I don't do it, I'm certainly not doing my part to educate. And so I sat down and took the survey. I definitely felt like during it, um, a moment and a sense of somewhat pride for the first time in my time of working here since 2016, I was asked what my thoughts were. But again, there's that moment where you're like also hesitant, which I think a lot of our, our you know colleagues of color feel in wanting to share their truth, but also wondering if I share it, what change will really happen? If a survey is conducted and nothing happens, then it actually can do more damage because then people see that I fill out this survey, I took all that time, and they didn't even listen to me. So it would have been almost better if you didn't even offer a survey. It was very, very clear from the beginning and over the, the entire fall that this survey is really driving our efforts. The results of the survey were extensive, but they were clear. We are proud of the work we do. We try our best to treat each other with respect in the workplace. This place matters to us, but not all of us feel like we matter in this place. When it comes to issues of race, inclusion, and diversity, we have two different athletic departments, and they're separated by a gap of misunderstanding. Some of us hope to bridge the gap. Some of us don't understand it. And some of us are seeing it for the first time. And so there are some areas that stand out to me. Um, one is that a lot of employees are very satisfied with their jobs here. People love working in athletics. A lot of people are open to um, diversity education. And people want to learn. Did I have to put it down a couple times because I was angry and I was emotional? Yes. But I think the majority of white people they acknowledged that racism is very real and that they wanted to be a part of the change. And after I processed the negative comments, I still tried not to be angry because this is, they were honest. We need you to be honest in order for us to move forward. I respect the people that were honest, that said they don't believe there's an issue, that says I don't see why we're saying Black Lives Matter. But my hope is that through all of the work that we're doing, they will be honest in those as well, and that we can begin to transform their thought process. We've been a leader in everything we've done, and golly, if it wasn't for athletics, and it is for athletics, that, that integration and that race relations is so much better. Looking back to Jackie Robinson, to, to uh, uh, Bill Russell, to, to all the giants uh, here, here on campus, to the to the Laura Hintons and the Collis Temples and, and to the people that, that were the first to break barriers down. The seriousness of this survey um, and how it was conducted, the rigor behind it, and then now just how important it is to the department, it, it just really shows that there's so much buy-in um, with the administration. So being able to sort of have that impact on our student athletes, the world does change, their world changes. Oh, it feels, you know, like being on the verge of something that will have this huge impact and um, can literally change the world, but all of our world individually. You know, our actions speak louder than our words. Watch us, because if this is just a, uh, a PR stunt, it goes nowhere and it's a waste of everyone's time. But uh, I, I want to make it clear that this is not, this is something that uh, is going to be a valuable tool and a lot of tools that we use going forward to determine what we need to do to continue to get better. That's the potential of conversation. If you wade through the differences, if you can cut through the tension, if you can speak honestly, more importantly, listen empathetically, then you can find answers to all the important questions, even the ones we never thought to ask. But the power of conversation lies not in the words exchanged, but in the actions inspired. And if actions speak louder than words, then the opposite is true too. Inaction is the most deafening silence of all.
If we don't all take steps forward from ignorance to concern, from concern to individual action, from individual action to collective movement, then we'll end up right back where we started. So while I'm glad we started the conversation, I have one more question to ask. What are you going to do about it?